Welcome everyone to CBC TV Game of the Week Playoff Edition Round 2. It is the regional quarterfinals here in Division 5, Region 17. We are presented by the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. I am your play-by-play -play man for the night, Kevin Arnold, and I am joined by my broadcast partner. So good, back-to-back -back weeks, we're back together. Double A, Anthony Alford. Double A, we are just doing our pregame hit for social media. Make sure you guys follow at Anthony Alford 92. That is where you guys can see those pregame hits, previews of the game, but we if, if the pregame festivities get going early enough, we can kind of come on and do that right here on CBC TV as well. Double A, we're talking about this could be an offensive show here this evening in Perry, Ohio. Yeah, and I think that's what we're going to see here tonight. You know, both of these teams specialize on offense, they specialize in skill position groups. So... I'll tell you what, and you mentioned some of the key names. We will get to them as the broadcast goes. Uh, but you got track stars all over the field. And as a track coach, number one, I appreciate it. But I think these coaches appreciate it here tonight because you can see, hey, you can move guys all around, all over the field. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun on offense for these defensive backs. They're going to be going to work here tonight. They're going to earn this playoff victory. And like we said, we are in Perry, Ohio. If you're tuned in to ChagrinValleyConference.com or the Chagrin Valley Conference YouTube channel, you can see right there on your screen the two teams. But if you're just tuning in for the audio of the game here tonight and you love what we bring here on CBC TV, we are in Perry, Ohio. That is the Lake County version of Perry, Ohio, as the Perry Pirates host the Navarre Fairless Falcons here in Division 5, Region 17, Regional Quarterfinal, the number three seed versus the number six seed. Two teams, AA, that come in averaging about 37 points per game. Uh, Fairless right on that 37 point per game mark. Perry, 37 and a half. Perry only giving up less than 14 points per game. Fairless, 17 points per game. So two teams that are under that 20 point mark defensively, over that 35 point mark offensively. Something has got to give here tonight. Yeah, and that's and that's going to be critical here tonight is what exactly is going to give. I mean, look, I'll just say this. You know, on on the fairless side of things, you know, they, look, they tied their school record in the regular season with nine wins uh, this year with last year. So they tied that. Perry, and obviously in this conference, you had their game earlier in the year against Geneva, Kevin. You know, Perry has a lot of talented guys on the field. To answer your question as far as, like, who's going to be able to make that stop and, and commit that stop, it's going to be, as crazy as it sounds, a lot of these players go both ways. So offensively, you know, or I should say defensively, they have to stop themselves. You know, so if you are facing off against a talented receiver, you are studying their moves. You're studying how they're coming off of the line of scrimmage. You're studying, you know, what's their top moves. Do they want to go inside to work or do they want to work outside and come back in? Those are the things that are going to be studied here tonight. And to be perfectly honest, Kevin, it's probably going to take a half. It may take three quarters for these defensive backs, for these linebackers to figure out these offenses because they're that good. Absolutely, they are that good. We are just under four minutes away from the opening kickoff in this one as Fairless walks out down to our left. We are up in the beautiful confines of the press box in our own confines here today. Usually where the, uh, I know the Perry student broadcasting group is broadcasting out of, they have given way to us here at CBC TV. We can't thank them enough as well. And they, they do a great job too. They, they do an they, excellent job. Those led, students do a great job. Being taught by and you know kind of led by one of the great guys in Northeast Ohio sports media industry. If you if you've watched ever watched Bruce Trennan on TV or uh, heard the name Gene Winters. What up Gene? That is that is a <laughs> that is a guy that you need to learn from because he's he's gone through and knows exactly what it takes to produce games like this, radio shows, TV shows, whatever it is. One of the be. nicest guys, too. One of, One the, of the nicest guys. Absolute nicest guys. Um, so want to thank uh, them as well for giving us this space. We want to thank Giorgio's Pizza for supplying the entire press box with 
dinner here tonight as Fairless flies the Fairless Falcon flag through their sign. And I believe that was Luke Yoder. And that was Luke Yoder. You're going to hear that name a lot tonight for the Fairless Falcons, a wide receiver for them on their side. And on the other side, it's Braden Richards. We said you're going to hear a couple names all night long, playing both ways. Yoder, Richards, these are two guys you can move around the formation. They can catch the ball. They can run. They might even go in the backfield sometimes and take some snaps. Talk about double A, because we did get a chance to see one of Fairless's games uh, from uh, YouTube as Perry comes running out as well. Their band blares below us and kind of run out of their tunnel right through the traditional Perry pirate symbol. And they look ready to go. Both teams looked ready to go. But double A again, we saw, got a chance to see Fairless because they were on uh, Big Z Sports 99 9 down in Stark County, Tuscarawas County area just a few weeks ago and taking on the Worcester Triway team that Perry took on last week and beat him 60 to eight. Luke Yoder really stood out in that film. Yeah, and what's gonna be cri critical here, you know, Yoder was great about him. It's that initial first move. He is smooth on the football field. So it's gonna be critical here for the Pirates. You know, once he gets out in open space, first of all, don't let him get out in open space, but if it does happen or when it does happen, you got to set your feet, contain. Containment's going to be huge, and, and lock it in your position. That's going to be huge. If you're too aggressive, if you're too aggressive and you go after him, he will make you miss. But Richards does the same thing. He does the exact same thing. Again, both of these teams are mirror images of each other. So it's almost like when you're out for scout team, you are essentially coaching against yourself for real on Friday night on the field. Yoder comes into the night, 65 catches, 1,152 yards, 17.7 yards per catch, 15 touchdowns. He's also one of one uh, as a quarterback this year. And, and you just mentioned Brayden Richards real quick before we get to the kickoff is the just under 30 seconds away, Perry getting their final special teams instructions. Richards is one of those you hear track guy but he's not just a track guy that only ends up being a track guy. He mm -hmm. is a track guy that is also a football guy. He is a Swiss Army knife of sorts that Bob Gesowich, the head coach of Perry, has been able to find many different uses for on the football field. Yeah, big key before we get things going here, Kevin. You can have all the speed in the world. It's going to come down to the discipline and the utilization of that speed. Can you be in control of your speed? That will be the difference here tonight. Because even tonight, you can get out of control knowing that this is a big playoff game. So the aforementioned Brayden Richards and his wide receiver running mate, Jaden Hacken, go back deep. That Perry will receive the opening kickoff as referee giving the final instructions to the fearless kicker. That's Gavin Wickham who will be teeing it off at the 40-yard, 40 42 or 40-yard 40 line, excuse me, of fearless and now Hacking and. Richards see something in the formation from the special teams unit from Fairless. They switch sides. Richards goes to the far side, both standing about their nine-yard line, hacking nearest us. And we are underway here at Alumni Stadium in Perry, Ohio. Hacking will take this one across the 20, over the 25, gets out of a tackle, over the 35, bullies his way out across the 40, and they'll be marked down. Knee goes down right at the 40-yard line, so good Starting field position, about a 30-yard return, double-A, and good field position for this explosive Pirate offense. Great field position set up by the kick return and the blockers getting their established box, sealing in and allowing that big-time return. That's huge for this Perry offense to get going. Perry led by their quarterback, Walter Moses. He is 114 to 156 for 1,951 yards, 24 touchdowns, five interceptions 10 two-point conversions as well as Richards gets the ball first makes a couple guys miss doing a lot of running for only a couple yards and push the ball out to the 42 yard line a gain of two on first down second down and eight and you already see it already as Kevin you pointed out in our pregame Richards is going to be used and technically on the roster he is technically the backup quarterback but he is all purpose you see him in the wide receiver position number 12 he is going to be used 
all over the football field, and he was just used on the first play on the jet sweep. Him and Charlie Rockwell go out far side to the left. Uh, Moses getting final instructions from his coaching staff. He'll be in the shotgun all alone. Second down and eight from their own 42. Moses looking left to Rockwell, and he's got him over the midfield into Falcon territory across the 45. Gets up after the first down, and he gets down to the fearless 44. First and 10, Perry. First snap coming in fearless territory. And again, that's where you know your defensive backs, your linebackers, they're going to have to work hard and communicate. You had two guys at the same spot, and Rockwell took full advantage and got extra yards. Moses stays in the shotgun. He'll have Jaden Studio to his left hip. He'll hand to Studio. Over the 45, gets tripped up after a gain of a couple. Maybe a, give him one down to the 43, so second and nine. 10-31 left, no score, first quarter of this Division 5 Region 17 regional quarterfinal matchup. And what makes Perry dangerous, you know, we put all the attention on the receiving core. You know, we're going to see Moses throw the football tonight. He has a beautiful ball, but Studio on the ground, that change of pace. You know, remember Kareem Hunt with the Chiefs way back when, kind of that change of pace. Studio's going to be right there. He's going to be a big factor tonight. Two receivers either side. Moses looking to his right, has a man open, hacking. Got turned around, went through his fingertips and falls to the turf. Incomplete third and long coming up for the Pirates. Ah, uh, no hack. He wants that back. He will get an opportunity. He will get the football back. Um, I, it wouldn't surprise me at the next play you go back to him. So this is going to be interesting. But I know he's like, mm. he saw the end zone. And, you know, playoff situations sometimes when it's like right there, Kevin, and you're almost in that position, it's like, mm. Got to get that football first. 10 3 left, first quarter. First, or third down and nine from the fearless 43. Moses with the snap, rolling to his left, looking left, goes across his body and has his man open. That is Rockwell again, who gets to the 30 yard line. A gain of 13 on 39. Move the chains and Pirate. Pirates are in business here on their first drive. We saw a little bit of Moses last year. He worked his spot duty as the backup. He was a freshman a year ago. And even the progression from last year to the game that we saw a couple weeks ago to right now, his ability to move around the pocket, go through his progression, and go from there, it's huge. And that's set up there, and Rockwell worked with him and made the connection. So first and 10 from the Fairless 30-yard line now after the 13-yard grab by Rockwell. Studio across the 25, has some space over the 20, inside the 15, lunges out towards the 10-yard line, comes up just shy of that 10-yard line, but gets down another first down gain of 19. It'll be first and 10 at the Fairless 11. And that offensive line on the right side, setting things up for Studio. And let Studio do the rest. Let <laughs> him do the rest. He has the speed. He has second gear speed, and it showed on that last run. Under nine minutes to go now, ticking first quarter clock. Richards will take the snap this time. It's over the 10, push, trying to drag a defender in, and he goes. Just shy of the end zone, knee goes down before he was able to reach. So it'll be a gain of 10 down to the one. First and goal, Pirates. Braden Richards taking the direct snap as the backup quarterback. But you know what he's going to do with it, double A. They're going to try to push up front, and he's just going to find that gap and use that speed. Yeah, and that's just that's his specialty. That's what he does. And what's going to be curious right now, will he line up again a quarterback which is his natural position, That's again, on, his, on the roster. But, yes, he is, Kevin. He's lined up at quarterback. Brain Richards back to take the snap, looking for the hole on the left side of the offensive line, and Richards goes in. Pirates on their opening possession, crack the scoreboard first with 8.22 to go, pending the extra point. It is 6-0 Perry. Yeah, and let's take a look here. And Richards getting the block right there, setting it up. He has the speed to pull it off. The, the speed is just unbelievable. And it's just one of those things, Kevin. Just give the man the football. <laughs> He'll find a way. He will find a way. So Perry will attempt the extra point. Waiting the ready for play signal. 
ball up and through the uprights. Is Hubert Orignac on to for the extra point, making the score seven nothing Pirates over the Falcons, opening possession, and now it switches over to the Fairless Falcons to try to answer. This is one of those things where last time we had Perry on CBC TV, AA, Perry likes to get that ball first. They like to go down and score and put you under pressure early. And last time we saw them, they, when they scored first, they also went for a short kickoff, got it, and were able to double that up. Don't know if they're going to pull that out here, but something to keep an eye on on this kickoff. And I'm glad you pointed that out, too. And the man who's going to kick the football is the quarterback, uh, Walter Moses. I believe he's going to kick the football. He did in, in the Geneva game that you guys had, Kev. And just you're seeing that a lot. And you made a great point in that football game. A lot of spot kicking, a lot of location kicking. It's not just get the ball deep. It's find a dead zone. And right now it's about the 35-yard line, between the 40 and 35-yard line. That's where he wants to get it. So, again, a, a short kickoff, but Fairless ready for it with an up man. And they are going to get good starting field position over the 45, out to the 47-yard line, their own 47, close to midfield. And both these high-powered offenses getting good starting field positions to start things off. Yeah, Perry starting at their own 40 in their, their first drive and, you know, and Fairless starting at the 46. So, again, putting the defense at a bind. That's what all these decisions kind of lead up to. We'll see it. If uh, we'll see if Fairless can take advantage. So Carson Colucci comes out, quarterback for Fairless. Spread formation, looking to throw early, and got his man Brody Pumneo. Another name you're going to hear a lot of. It's Pumneo and Yoder on those outsides that they look for a lot. A good gain on first down out near midfield, over midfield, out down to the 49, second down and five. Yeah, and this defense, again, when you talk about speedy receivers, they're going to be put to work. They're going to be put to task. It's going to be important. Again, the communication. You kind of see it on your screen right now. You know, guys communicating and seeing, like, okay, who's our assignments and go from there. Colucci rolling to his left. Has Pumneo again over the 45, down near the first down marker at the 44, and they will move the sticks. So two gains of five from Pumneo from Colucci, and it's a quick first down for Fairless. Yeah, and, again, the communication is important because that could have been a bigger play. That could have been a bigger play for the Falcons. The defense was able to respond in that situation. Now, if you're the Falcons, you like what you did there. Any play where you gain five yards uh, a play, that's good. You stay with it. You operate your offense a quick strikes. So that's going to be important here tonight for Fairless. So Colucci in the shotgun. He'll have Peter Killey as running back. On his hip, Colucci will call his own number. And... Maybe get a yard down to the 43. Good push up front from the defensive line of Perry. Second down and nine, 7.27 to go. Fairless trailing 7 nothing. Yeah, and I, and I like that. Um, obviously, it worked out for the defense, only giving up a yard. But offensively, you make that call to keep the defense honest. You know, you're expecting your receivers to, to get the football, their receivers. So keeping them honest. Got to run the football a few times, establish the quarterback as an offensive running threat as well. Three receivers far side, Pumneo down here in the near side, Colucci rolling to that far side, has Yoder, but skips it right in front of Yoder, so not enough on that pass. Bring up a third and long for the Falcons. So let's see here. I mean, we got a third and nine situation. You're about past midfield. I would imagine just based on where they're at on the field, this is going to be a four-down territory here. So there has to be two plays defensively dialed up here for Perry to really establish some things. I would even imagine a Fairless, even if they, even if this is not a nine-yard game here, they're going for a five- or six-yard game for a fourth and short. Colucci fakes the handoff to Yoder. Over to Pumneo. Over the 40. Pushing his way down to the 39-yard line. So... A decent gain where you really would see that fourth down attempt from Fairless. And you see this all the time, Double A, as the game changes, and this is in any sport, it kind of trickles on down. As much as you try to keep things 
somewhat basic or elementary in the younger stages of development in some sports. You see that trickle down effect and you're seeing in the pro game where guys are, teams are going for it more on fourth down. You're seeing it now here in the high school game as well. Yeah, and it's just that progression of the offense. And we'll see here what happens on his fourth down. Fourth down and five. Kluchy rolling to his right. And the ball tipped at the line. He had Yoder open. Couldn't get it to him. So Perry's defense makes the crucial stand first. And they maintain a 7-0 lead. And they'll take yeah. over first and 10 at their own 39 with 6.08 to go. Yeah, let's, I believe there who got the tip there. And that tip was huge. Washington Jr., I believe, had the tip on the outside in the replay. And, again, just moving around with this offense, Perry showing up, and that's so important, getting your hands up there at the line of scrimmage, and Perry forcing a turnover on downs. Dayton Washington Jr. with the big stop for the Pirate defense, and now Moses and this offense can go back to work. This time, he'll hand it off to Owen McCoon. McCoon, good push, gain a three on first down over the 40 out to the 42, second down and seven. Yeah, and Perry, again, just being able to move. They have different offensive formations, power offensive formation. That's where you will see McCoon in action in the backfield. Uh, so, you know, a few games this year. They started the game in that formation. This time in the second possession, offensively they do that, but now they're back into the shotgun. Yoder got the stop on that when he came in the leading tackler with 97 tackles on the year for the Falcons. This time hacking. Good job to keep his feet in bounds on that sideline pass from Moses. It'll bring up a third down. Make it about three out of the 46, their own 46 for Perry. So if you're the Falcons, a lot of those, a lot of the defensive players that's on the field right now was just on offense, and they're not too happy about not getting the fourth down after they had great field position. This is their opportunity right now, defensively, to make a stand, get the momentum back on their side, and get back on offense. Perry already converting a third down in this game. 5.25 to go. Moses fakes the handoff, has his man open. McCoon over the, over the top, just gets taken down. Yoder with the touchdown saving tackle. But a great play design from Coach, Coach Gesowich and Perry. First and 10 down at the Falcon 20. Yeah, and it's so hard. I mean, you, it's hard to see. <laughs> it's hard to really see and establish, hey, McCoon as a offensive weapon in the pass game out of the backfield. I know that kind of stunned the defense a little bit because they thought, they thought they were able to get Walter Moses and they were right there. And that's what makes it frustrating defensively. And they were so close to getting out of it. Perry got a big third down conversion. Five minutes left, Perry on top, 7-0. McCoon gets the ball again, and another good run on first down. Gain of four, but a flag on the far side of the field. So we'll wait the call from the officiating crew. Might be an illegal shift is the early indication from the offense. We'll wait the official call. Legal shift on the offense, so they will march it back five yards, so from a what would have been a second down and six after that good four yard run. Repeat first down, first and 15 for Perry. And obviously out of the huge momentum play there, that's not what you want if you are Perry, obviously. Let's, we'll see how they respond, but the penalties, it's always a talking point. And coaches preach that during the regular season. Now it's even more important in the playoffs. Moses looking to pass, looking right. Has his man wide open and falling to the turf. If not, would have gone into the end zone untouched, but all by himself, Owen Tomasic for Perry. And it's another first and goal situation. And remember, because this is not the NFL, you know, like nobody was near him, but, you know, in these rules here, once you go to the ground, that's the end of the play. So, you know, in the NFL, he would have been able to, like, Stop, drop, and roll his way to the end zone. Moses now in a shotgun. McCoon on his right hip. First and goal from the four-yard line. Moses calling his own number, trying to get to the far side. Good job to set the edge. Falcons flying to the football on that one. And Moses just slides down to the turf. He'll live for another down. 
Yeah, Stolt Stortler there defensively making the play. And really more defensively, kind of a coverage stop there. You know, you got Moses. He wants to utilize his legs to try to find that opportunity. Receivers, I want to see the receivers, even, even as important in the red zone, really kind of maneuver their way to try to find Moses. Moses will get the ball to you if you're able to find him. So smart play to just sit down on the football, but the disadvantage there, once you slide, wherever you start your slide, that's where it goes down. So a loss of three, second and goal from the seven. Braden Richards, though, crossing pattern. Moses finds him, seven-yard touchdown strike, and now Richards has a rushing touchdown, a one, receiving touchdown, a seven. It makes it 13-0, three, 326 to go first quarter. Yeah, and Richards just getting after it. Again, same position. Remember the first play? of the game coming out of that same position, the same play, that's exactly what happened. His speed is incredible. And if you're a defender, how do you stop that? You saw that on the replay coming across. How do you stop that as a defender? It's gonna be tough. Rignac on to attempt the extra point this time and good once again. So 14 to nothing. Perry again doubling up on that lead. They get the stop on fourth down. They cash it in in the end zone and what you really look back at at that play where Richards goes in from seven yards out 326 to go leading 14 to nothing is Perry over the Fairless Falcons they started on the far hash and hashes at the high school level the college level they are much further apart and he came all the way across the formation yeah he did. And scored on the near side of the end zone yeah he did and I think the the difference we're seeing so far you know vertical speed you know, vertical speed is very important. The one thing Richards brings is horizontal speed. And you're seeing it with the jet sweeps and being able to turn upfield. The blocking has been very dependable on that side of the offensive line. The Fairless Falcons are going to have to find a way to get something going defensively uh, to really combat that. Yoder and Pumneo back deep to receive the kickoff from Walter Moses and the Perry Pirates, who lead 14 to nothing in this regional quarterfinal Moses again with the short kickoff up men ready again but a better job of coverage by the Perry Pirates and the Fearless Falcons will start just shy of the 40 at their own 39 yard line a little bit of an adjustment on the Falcons side of things knowing that Moses likes to spot kick and Perry likes to do that uh, that line the lines moved a little bit closer to that zone. So remember the first kick return, it was open between the 35 and 40. This time they kind of closed it up a little bit and that made a difference. They're back out offense, that's a win. So Carson Colucci brings his team back out. He'll hand to Gilly and he'll get out to the 40 yard line. Only a gain of one, second down and nine. Something important, an important stat to mention so everyone tuning in on CBC TV here tonight, Double A, Perry went up 60 to nothing in the first half of their game against Worcester Triway last week. They are up 14 to nothing with still three minutes left in the first quarter. They have outscored their opponents early in the playoffs, 74 to nothing here in first halves. Yeah, and that's that's what makes this Falcons drive critical here. That they got to get some kind of a score here. Pumneo, good grab in traffic, out across the 45. It's stoned by Washington Jr. at the 47, maybe 46 and a half yard line. It'd be a third down, third down and three for the Falcons. Yeah, and the Falcons hollowing up here against a defense here that, I'll tell you what, a little bit hard. We got to get that tape off there, off of, <laughs> off of the line of there for Perry. You got, got tape there in the 45. Colucci gets the snap, calls his own number again, and nothing doing. Richards comes through and amongst the other host of Pirates. Jaden Studio also in there. So again, you're at your we're kind of broadcasting a game where guys are playing both sides of the football. That Colucci quarterback sneak just hasn't been there the first couple times they've called it here tonight. Yeah, and it's tough to run that play anyway when it's you know, you're, you're that far out. Like, if it's third and one, maybe third and two, but a little bit tough here. A uh, good call here for the Falcons. Play field position, make Perry work offensively. 
Oh, this always unique, makes me nervous. Unique <laughs> punting formation. Falcons <laughs> fan their line out. They fan it back in. And now a timeout oh. will be called by Fairless as they were running down the play clock. Smart play here on their own side of the field to try to, to maybe pin Perry back, go on a much longer drive. But with the extra formation, they need to call a timeout, and it's a great time for us to thank our presenting sponsor here tonight of your CBC TV playoff game of the week. That is the Ohio Center for Oral, Facial, and Implant Surgery. There are doctors Keith Schneider, Don Lewis, and Jill Weber. Specialized in dental surgery, implants, corrective jaw, and facial surgery, along with trauma reconstruction. For all of your oral surgery needs, please visit the Ohio Center for Oral, Facial, and Implant Surgery website. We say it all the time here. We'll say it again for all of our new viewers or people that haven't tuned in a while on CBC TV. That is www.08surgery.com. That's www.08surgery.com. We want to thank them for their support of the CBC, Chagrin Valley Conference, student athletes, and CBC TV. And it was so nice catching up with the commissioner of the CBC, also with the Ohio Center for Oral Facial Implant Surgery, Don Lewis, last week at Cuyahoga Heights up there. Uh, he's Boone. fantastic. Commissioner Don Lewis, he is phenomenal. So, Lotzenheiser punts this football away, pinning Richards to the sideline, takes a pirate bounce and a falcon bounce around the 30 and be down there at the Perry 28-yard line. Still 1-11 left in the first quarter. Perry already on top, 14 to nothing, looking to add to that lead. And there has just been no answer defensively just yet from the Falcons for this high-powered offense. It, an offense that looks completely focused, making a run here in Division Five. Yeah, but, but the one thing that maybe you're saying right now, if you're Coach Sarball and the Falcons, you know, right now, after that punt, Perry's going to have to work. This is the furthest back they have been uh, to this point offensively, so now they're going to have to work to make this drive happen. Richards goes in motion. Moses fakes the handoff to him. Rolls to his right, or left, excuse me, and that's one of the most difficult throws to make as a right-handed quarterback. Rolling to your left, throwing back across your body. Dangerous throw, had Rockwell open, not able to connect. Yeah, and like you said, Kevin, that is a difficult throw to make. Moses makes it look easy to do. <laughs> he, he does, he makes it easy to do, but it is a difficult thing. Um, I'm sure, and we kind of seen in this play, or the last play, uh, defensively, you're telling your safeties, don't let anything but get behind you. Let nothing get behind. So that is an adjustment so far here defensively. So now Richards will line up on one side of Moses, Jaden Studio on the other. Moses gets the snap. Hand to Richards, going left side. Over the 30. Waits for a block. Patient running from Richards. Setting up a few more blocks to get a couple extra yards out across the 35 to the 37. So it'll bring up a third down and two. They need to get to their own 39. Yeah, and good job by the receivers on the left side getting some critical blocks there to extend the run. Uh, but here we go. I mean, you got a third down coming up right here. And we'll see if Perry can continue their offense. Obviously, the Falcons, I mean, this is not the same type of test as the Pirates faced last week. So we're going to see here how Perry can respond. They may have to do a little bit some underneath things to keep the offense moving. So Perry kind of huddling up far back from where the ball is spotted at their own 37. Third down and two. Clock stopped at 59 seconds. 14 to nothing, Perry looking for more. And on a third and two throw into traffic, Luckily for Perry, it falls to the turf. There were a bunch of Falcons around there. There were a bunch of Pirates around there. No one able to come up with it, and it'll be a fourth down for Perry. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was. It looked like from here, two receivers going after the football. Uh, it, it looked like Charlie Rockwell was in the area, mm -hmm. maybe hacking as well yeah. in the area on the far side, but Pumneo and Yoder were in there from their defensive back positions as well. So a lot of traffic. Again, that roll to the left, trying to throw back to the middle of the field, putting them in a dangerous hey, spot. Cap, but they're Pir going for it here. Pirates leaving their offense out there. And flags fly. A lot of energy over there on the Falcon sideline. So a false start from Perry. They were going to go for that one. 
but guys were not set, and those are those little mental mistakes that push the football back. Punt will come from further deep in your own territory, giving it back to Fairless. I wonder how many times like Jim Trussell watches football games whenever he can, and it's like, it's the field position game. It's the field position game. I, I don't disagree with the call initially, but you got to make sure everyone's on the same page. That did not happen, which led to the false start, and now Perry having a punt. So Perry will punt the football away. There will be Brian Cox, their punter, and hits a beauty. Yoder calling for the fair catch inside his 30. They will mark it and start this drive at their own 28-yard line. Still 48 seconds left in this first quarter. So much already happening. Braden Richards, though, the key man on offense for the Pirates. A one-yard touchdown run to get the scoring started, and then a seven-yard touchdown reception from left to right across the field using that speed and then two extra points from Hubert Arinyak make it 14 to nothing Perry Fairless in their losses this year have only lost by a total of three points so a unique position for them but they were also down last week in the opening round of the playoffs almost picked off was Colucci getting his hands in there Cade Schiano and, and that football, Kevin, came in our direction. And we saw Shiano, you know, making the read there. And he just, he, I don't know if he could believe that, that ball was coming in his direction there. Sure, he'll want another opportunity. But I like him to, like, really put his hands up and really get that football on the high point. He would have had the pick six. So second down and ten. Now Colucci will roll to his left, looking for a man open. And he's going to go down. Sacked on the play, back to the 27-yard line, a loss of one. Owen McCoon getting in there for the sack. And under 30 seconds now to play. Fairless going backwards. It'll be third and 11 from their own 27. Yeah, McCoon, 175 pounds. And uh, sophomore linebacker made, you know, the big play offensively, defensively, in control, and able to make that play defensively. So the Falcons... Satisfied to take that third down play into the quarter break. And at the end of quarter number one, the Pirates in control early, 14 to nothing over Fairless. We just kind of mentioned, just went over these plays, Double A. One of the guys we mentioned, we haven't seen much from Luke Yoder for Fairless just yet, but Braden Richards we have seen plenty of. Yeah, and they're finding ways by any means necessary to give Richards to football, and we'll, we'll see here with Yoder. We'll see kind of things, see if things open up for him, open up for both of the big time receivers uh, for Fairless. The key thing here so far that the Falcons have done to this point, it's like, okay, can you slow down Perry offensively? Can you slow them down offensively? They've done that, but now on their end, the Falcons, you know, they have to do the same thing, and They'll be in good shape. Real quick before we get back to action, ChagrinValleyConference.com. Five CVC teams in action tonight. Perry, one of them. You can check out the scoreboard, uh, live scoreboard update for the other four Chagrin Valley Conference teams. Let's start the second quarter. Third down and 11. Colucci finds his man right at the sticks. It's going to be close and may have just enough. That is Pumneo who is slow to get up, Brody Pumneo. Great play to get into, found that space maybe in the zone and got to the stick, something we didn't see last week. This week, Pumneo, knowing where the sticks are, opening up for his quarterback, getting the first down. And what's been impressive for both teams and both sets of receivers is they have been working with their quarterback, working with their quarterback and finding a way to you know, help the quarterback throw the football to them. First and 10 now at their own 38. Run play out across the 40, out to the 41 yard line. Be a gain of three on first down, second and seven. I think what's gonna be interesting here as this game kind of progresses and moves on is I wanna see, you know, like, we, we've hyped up the, the passing game. 
how's the running game going to materialize? How's it going to fully materialize internally on, on you know on the inside? We'll see it kind of play out here as the game goes on. Fairless with a second down and seven at their own 41. Pumneo going in motion. Colucci with the snap. He'll roll to his left. And good hands to get in as actually Pumneo. Washington. Dayton Washington got, got in uh, over there. It's difficult to see as in the press box that we have, not only are we looking out over the field, we're looking out over their track, which has plenty of space and always one of the main spots for all of the postseason track events, some special uh, track meets as well, including the Perry Relays, if anybody has ever been here for that. Uh, and far side of the field really is a far side of the field from where and the press Kev, box is. Kev, last year they had like a full vehicle out on this track for homecoming. Like a full car on the track. It was crazy. <laughs> and flags fly on the third and two place. So they gave Pumneo the catch there. I thought I saw him with the football. I wasn't sure if they called it a catch or not. But a, So a third and short will go back to a third and seven now on the false start. And we've seen from both teams that false start taking you out of having that playbook kind of open to you. Now you go from a third and short to a third and long on the road against a defense that has stepped up and backed up their offense early in this ball game. Yeah, we're going to see now, and that's a big point because right now, trying to get that momentum, we'll see once they come out of the huddle. I want to see kind of, or hear, you know, this crowd's going to get into it. They're going to get into it big time if Perry can get this third down stop. Third down and seven at their own 41. Colucci back to pass. Has Yoder. Yoder trying to make a man miss. He does. Going east and west. Needs to get north and south. Flags come in from behind the play. May have been just shy of a first down. We'll await the call. Looks like a call going against Fairless once again. 10.36 to go. And what started was as a promising drive. Mental mistakes. Flags. Penalties really hurting this drive for Fairless. And, and that was 11 there. And, and, and they had an opportunity. Because uh, I was just about to say, like, Yoder would – and I'll still say it even though the play didn't go their way. Yoder's speed, what he's able to do to kind of make up ground. Because that play – and maybe the holding kind of played into it. Mm -hmm. But the play looked – completely you know not not happening and Yoder what he's able to do to make up ground as quickly as he can that's what makes him dangerous that's what's made him dangerous against defenses all year long and has helped the Falcons to their nine and two regular season record so fearless back at a third and 11 so they went from the spot of the foul play would have been a yard shy of the first down but in that plus territory area looks like fearless will call a timeout before this third down play they will be left with only one here in the first half a third and 11 they converted with Colucci to Pumneo the first time this time Perry will get a chance to kind of set their defense fearless trying to find those answers where can they find these pockets of space that they have been so used to all year they are not nine and two for no reason this is a team that came in averaging 37 points per game they are an explosive offense and as we said they have only lost games by a total of three points and that was two games back to back cbc a and canton south which talking to coach sarbo before the game he said that they were in both of those, just a couple of those mistakes at the end, not able to convert on two-point conversions, cost well, them those games. Well, Kevin, Kev, uh, Perry defensively, uh, especially their defensive backs, they're keeping everything in front of them. You know, they're keeping everything, you know, right in front. And you're seeing the front six, the front seven, you know, in, in this style of defense. You know, they're pressing on the inside. Fairly, they're not running the football, so all you really have to do is contain defensively uh, the passing game. Keep everything in front of you. You have an opportunity. Lucci with the snap. Going deep for Pumneo, and that's intercepted. Braden Richards with it. Inside Falcon territory across the 40, over the 35, down to the 34-yard line. 
Yeah, let's take a look at it again. Keeping everything in front, creating that pressure, and Richards just read it. Richards read the play. The blocking was in place there, too. You saw the block right there. And that's what Richards can do. And that's what this defense has been doing. They've been keeping everything in front. It's made things tricky here for the Falcons. And the one drive where the Pirates had issues was where they had to start in their own end of the field, deep in their own end. But now they're back on short field, and they can really open this football game up. Richards, fourth interception on the year, sets up Perry first and 10 at the Falcon 33-yard line. Studio gets over the 30, down to the 27-yard line, gain of six, second and four for Perry. I also like, too, and you saw it on the previous replay just now, you know, when Richards got the interception, it wasn't just, okay, let me just run and go from there. It was instant communication, and communication is so important, especially in the playoffs. You got to know exactly what's going on, and Richards, by that communicating, you know, with his teammate, that gave him an extra five yards for field position for Perry to operate. Those five yards can make a difference on this offensive drive. A little confusing, confusion from the Falcon defense. Second and four from the Falcon 27. Moses around the right on the far side of the field. He taken down just shy, I believe, of the first down. He gets down to the 25 yard line. So a third and two coming up for Perry. I know uh, Garrett Miller, number 52 uh, for the Falcons. He was almost there. He almost made the play. I want him to keep his confidence up defensively. You know, reading your keys correctly and, you know, getting after the offense, getting after the ball carrier and, and moving. I want to see him keep it up. I know he didn't quite get to the play last time, but if he keeps that aggressiveness up, he will definitely have an opportunity. I like what this kid brings to the table. Moses comes to the sideline. Richards in the backfield is the quarterback, and Coach Gesowich of Perry will call their second time out of the half. They'll be left with one as well. 8.42 to go. 14 to nothing, Perry on the drive. Come out of this timeout. Third and two looking to add to the score. Double A, any other scores around the CDC going on right now? Yeah, let's take a look here. Uh, right now, second quarter, Kirtland up 22 to 6 over United. Lutheran West, they have improved. We saw them in the playoffs a year ago. Their faceoff gets holy name. They're leading 7 to nothing. Chardon over Geneva, 14 to nothing. And Cuyahoga Heights, who we saw last week, they're up 7 to nothing in the first quarter over Valley Christian of Youngstown. And 14 to nothing here in Perry, Ohio. As at Alumni Field, they are set with a third and two coming out of this timeout. So glad everyone is with us here tonight, whether on the Chagrin Valley Conference YouTube channel or the YouTube link in ChagrinValleyConference.com. Kevin Arnold alongside AA Anthony Alford for this Division 5 Region 17 quarterfinal matchup. Richards takes the snap, fakes the handoff, going to his right, got some space over the 10, makes the man miss and gets pushed out of bounds at the five yard line, Richards. Difficult to stop, but I believe I see a flag on the far side. This play coming back. Yeah, we'll see what the uh, – uh, yeah, you're right on it there, Kev, right on it. You know, he's going to say, like, what's, how do you stop Richards? <laughs> how do you do it just with the speed? Uh, but mental mistakes, penalties is, what, is what's stopping him on good plays right now. So, so from a – Potential first down and goal at, their, at the Falcon 5. Now comes all the way back to be a third and 12 at the Falcon 35-yard line. And that could change the course of this football game. That penalty, depending on what happens here, could really change the course of this game. Moses looks for the hard count. Gets the final signals as the Falcons set their defense. Falcon crowd getting in on it. A mishandled snap from Moses, and the Falcons right on it. They drop him at the 30-yard line. Gained a few yards, did Moses, but a good pursuit to the football. We've seen that on a couple plays from the Falcons' defense. Moses goes down and is a fourth down and seven 
at the 30-yard line. Looks like Perry keeping that offense out here. Yeah, and, and to build off of that point, the Falcons' defense at this point, knowing the job is not done yet. The job is not done. They got to get the stop here on a fourth down uh, to really change the course of this football game. Big play for the Falcon defense. Probably the play of the game right now to stay in this football game down two scores. 7.45 left in the first half. And Perry will have to call another timeout. And apologies, they are. this will be their second timeout. That was the first one before they were quicker to take the timeout off the board the first time. So Perry, timeout before a fourth down and seven. And a great time to... Again, thank our title sponsor of CBC TV, the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. They will diagnose and treat your facial pain, injuries, offer you a full range of dental implants along with bone grafting procedures. Please, please, if you're tuned in and yet you're dealing with that facial pain, anything you need from the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery, they will help you out. Head on over to their website, see what they can do for you, www.ohsurgery.com. That is www.ohsurgery.com. If you're interested in sponsoring CBC TV and you're watching this here tonight, head on over to greenvalleyconference.com after the game and get more details. Fourth down and seven, 743. Moses looking to pass, has a man open. Jaden hacking in and out of the hands. Looked like it may have hit off his face mask back through his hands and to the turf, so two times here tonight. Hacking had a chance at a touchdown from, from Moses, and just that disconnect, not there. A big fourth down stop from the Falcons defense. Yeah, uh, I know that's tough for Hacking. I, I know that's tough, that's tough. But, and again, you will say the play was there. The play was there, and the thing that I would point out, if, I, if I'm Coach Sarball in the locker room, even though the play went their way, if you're the defenders, you cannot allow hacking to go behind you. And that did, that almost cost them dearly. So the Falcon offense looking to crack the scoreboard here in the first half. Come out in a pistol formation. Colucci fakes the handoff to Gilly. He rolls to his left, looking for a man open. Had one, but not able to set his feet and overshoots his intended target, Andy Gill. Out at the 40-yard line, second and 10. Yeah, I'm, we've really seen, just looking at the stats here again, I want to thank uh, Perry for providing stats on digitalscout.com. Just looking, uh, fairless to this point, we've only, what, five rushing attempts here? Yeah, at some point, kind of mix up. Even here, even on a second down, you want to keep the defense honest. Keep them honest. Kind of switch up, run the football a little bit, and, you know, operate from there. Get a third and short. No, Fairless will come out in a spread formation. Colucci all alone. He'll move Stutler from right to left. Handoff this time. Perry, good job to set the edge. Couple yards only for Pum Neo. It's out over the 30, out to the 32. So another third and long situation and Fairless is having a difficult time finding that open space to work with they have seen most of this season yeah but again I keep it honest I mean even though it was a minimal game you know for the Falcons you do look we talk about this at every level of football if they see the same things you know passing you know and just passing all day the defenders are going to clamp down on that keep the defense honest from Neo goes in motion Colucci rolls his way, looking for a man open. He'll throw it, Pumneo, a great yes. snag. Reaching out, making a play for his quarterback, and yet again on third down, Brody Pumneo comes through, first and 10 at their own 45. Kev, that was all hands. That was all hands, just being able to command the football, reach out, and get the football right in the only spot the quarterback can throw the ball to. Defensively, there was really nothing else you could do. I mean, there was nothing else you could do there defensively. Great throw, excellent catch. 625. Now Colucci on the run. A little bit more space this time. He gets out to midfield. Gets into pirate territory at the 49. It'll be a second down, but much more space. Better blocking up front by that offensive line. 
yeah, in the offensive line, now, and this is the other reason why you want to start to establish some things, you want to get the offensive line an opportunity to eat. You know, sometimes when, when you're pass blocking all the time, look, you're, you're, standing, you're standing up and you're just blocking. When you're running the football, you get to drive into the defender. You want to give the offensive line an opportunity to do that. Colucci, again, some space. Gets down to the 46-yard line. It was a second down and five, so it'll bring up a third and short, third and one in to Pirate territory as they bring in an extra offensive lineman. And defensively, get a little bit of substitution as well for, uh, for the Pirates. Now, this is going to be interesting because how close up are the linebackers going to get because now there is a threat of a run on a third and short, especially in this formation with extra linemen but you also got to keep the receiver honest. Colucci goes up under center. QB sneak gets the first down. And now a flag flies late in the scuffle of the pile. First down grab. So this will be a dead ball call from this officiating crew. That's where both coaches in these big moments. You win a game, you get to move on. If you don't win, there is no more season. These mental mistakes can add up. We'll see what the call is as the head official talks to one of his side, his line judges. Yeah, I am. I, I'm, we'll see what happens here, what the call exactly uh, will be. Um, I will say on the QB sneak, uh, that's how you execute a QB sneak, you know, to this point. You, you get, a, you get a, either a lineman or, or a big running back behind the quarterback push the quarterback into first down yardage. I mean, depending on the result of the penalty, I mean, Jacoby Brissett would be proud. <laughs> he would be proud of, of that QB sneak. You know, the Browns haven't always done everything well. The offense has, been, has played decently well throughout the year, but as the officials push both teams to their sidelines, I was going to say before that play, it looked like the Falcons were going, going to stay in that shotgun formation. You see a lot of these spread offenses, even in these third and short scenarios, as we're about to get the call, dead ball, personal foul on Perry. So add 15 yards to the end of the play, and the Falcons are in business with 5.06 to go. They will come out with a first and 10 at the Perry 28-yard line, trailing 14 to nothing. Yeah, and this is the moment right here. Uh, you know, I know things not going away that Perry wants at this moment, you know, but the game continues. There's more that's happening with this game. You know, we got 5.06 left here in the second quarter. So now, look, this is the playoffs. You're going to face challenges like this. We're going to see how the Pirates respond. And if you're the Falcons, this is your opportunity right here. Now you mixed in a little bit of the run. Now you feel kind of safe of maybe a play fake, maybe go over the top, and this is where Yoder can get involved, number 18 at the top of the screen. First and 10 from the Pirate 28. Pumneo coming across. Good pursuit to the football. It'll be a loss of three back to the 31. So trying, a trying to get your playmakers on the outside, the football. Pirates ready for it, drop him for a loss. Yeah, and defensively the studio is right there that's how you respond that's what you want to do studio number one in that defensive end position at the top of your screen outside containment of those plays we've seen it a few times already now with the Falcons running that style of play so outside containment if you're defensive end it's going to be huge second and 13 and flag will come in as looked like Chiano got there a little early Pumneo had some space Shiano read it well, but went through Pumneo's body. And it'll be a pass interference penalty on the Pirates. So two major defensive penalties helping the Falcons on this drive. Yeah, and, and that happened there, and Falcons continue to drive. You know, again, if you're Perry, just stay in it. You know, just stay in it. You'll be, you'll be in good shape. And, and if I'm that cornerback, if I'm Shiano... I do like his game. I do like how he plays the game. You know, I know he had a pick six opportunity earlier in the game, didn't go his way, but I like his style of play. And he's saying right now, he keeps going, they keep coming my way. I got you. Pistol formation for the Falcons. They'll move two guys 
from left to right across the offensive line. Gilly gets it over the 10, inside the 10. And they'll mark him right there at the 10 yard line. So a gain of six on first and 10, second down and four. You know, I've been keeping an eye on Coach Gestowicz here on the near sideline. For those that don't know, you have that, uh, you have that area for your bench staff, your bench team on the sideline that runs from the 25 yard line to the 25 yard line on either side. And on both of those penalties on the defense, he walked that entire sideline, pacing back and forth, not liking helping the Falcons into a drive near the goal line. Colucci takes it himself inside the 10, bounces off a couple defenders. Forward progress gets him down to the nine yard line, a third and three. They've had some success this time with Colucci calling his own number coming into tonight. He had 81 carries for 452 yards and seven rushing touchdowns. But he's been more effective through the air, double A. 169 to 231, 71% passer, almost 2,500 yards, 29 TDs to only five interceptions on the season. They just haven't found a way to get that passing game going just yet. But they have an opportunity to do it here on the third down. 2.55, ticking second quarter clock. And Gilly moved in the backfield. False start will push him back. Again, another opportunity, a third and short. Peter, Peter Killy, excuse me. Peter Killy, the running back, moving early, not hearing that snap count. Now it'll be another third and long. Sorry about that, Kevin. Credit this crowd. Uh, this crowd, you know, kind of making an influence on uh, the Falcons and forcing someone to jump there, you know, in that backfield. And you hear them again as the third and eight's coming up. And there's an overhang over a good portion of the middle part of the stands as we will get a timeout, the final timeout for the Falcons. 2.36 to go, trailing 14 to nothing. Here at Alumni Stadium in Perry, Ohio, and again in Lake County, this overhang, you got the speakers right underneath, but it kind of, it almost helps you feel like that noise when you get good crowds in here, and this has always been one of the better crowds in the CVC, better stadiums to come to in the CVC. That noise, they know exactly when they're needed, and they stepped up to be the 12th man there on that last play. I almost was going to joke, it's time for this old house with Kevin Arnold. We're going to build the overhang. You know, we're going <laughs> to. You know, I'm. <laughs> The play-by-play -play man is supposed to, to, to set the scene. They're, while we are on video, you know, sometimes people just like to have the noise on in the background. Oh, yeah. You, you got to give them the radio edition of, of, of CBC TV as it's best It's okay to be compared to Bob Vila. It's hey, okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> that was my guy back in, back in the day. That was my oh, dude. And when he showed up on Home Improvement, him going back and forth with, with Tim Allen, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> Need more power. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big third down here, obviously, and for the Falcons to get on the scoreboard. They went through a lot here in this drive, helped out with some penalties, but this is their opportunity here to respond against a very stingy uh, Pirates defense here, Kev. And speaking of power, coming out in the power formation, and got, got it in the hands of Yoder. He's got some space, cut down just shy of the first down, Yoder going east and west a lot here tonight. That'll be close. And you have to think down here, their kicker, Wickham, has only, his longest kick has been 26 yards. So you are in his range. But down two scores, two minutes to go. It is a fourth down and two. You, you gotta think, Coach Starbuck's telling his team, we gotta go for this. Yeah, and I believe, um, I believe they was communicating a play. Uh, so definitely, an opportunity here, and four for two, Kev. Big moment of the football game right here. The Perry crowd rises again, 148 to go. Killy will get stuffed in the backfield. Two fourth down stops from this Perry defense. Keeps it a 14 to nothing lead. Jaden Studio coming through and makes the big stop. That was huge, and again, Studio was able to slip right in and make the play, and 
That's what needed to happen. That was a tough, tough play, fourth and a long two. And the Pirates, with everything that they went through defensively, they had to face adversity. They had to face it head on. The entire team had to face it head on. Credit to the Pirates for overcoming adversity on that drive and getting the turnover in the red zone. Richards comes back in to play quarterback. First and 10 from their own 10. And flags, false start. On the Pirates will back them up. But the Falcons have no way to stop the, stop the clock with no timeouts, a minute 44 to go. That was a crucial play for, yes, the Pirates got the stop. But if the Falcons could have converted, could have gotten a score there, you also get the football coming out of the locker room. And we saw how important that was to get two scores back to back for Ohio State last week as they were in a battle with Penn State. That book ending with two scores to end the half and at the start of the next half would have been big. But now Richards in plenty of space. First down run out across the 20 to the 23. And that big play right there, now it gives Perry the opportunity to get some kind of points out of this drive. Now you got room to operate and go. Richard stays in there, takes the snap, somehow corrals that, and making a bunch of guys miss. He'll get another first down out across the 35 to the 36 yard line. And Pirates are in business. Plenty of time left still, one time out to go. And now Moses is going to go back in the quarterback position. Richards is going to be in the receiving position as this thing continues. Moses takes the snap, looking to throw. Rolls to his left. Doesn't see anybody. Now sends Rockwell, and Pumneo picks it off. 114 to go out into Pirate territory. Brody Pumneo makes a big play defensively. And gets the football back for the Falcons. Yeah, let's take a look here at what happened. A little bit, you know, Moses trying to work, good footwork, a little bit of containment, just not able to get the leg underneath that throw. And, you know, just right there for the interception. And, man, those plays, those few plays make a huge difference in playoff situations, Kevin. Minute. 13 to go, Falcons with the football at the Pirate 42. Can they get something on the scoreboard? Trying to go for Yoder in double coverage. Good coverage by Hacking, and he had Owen Tomasic coming over the top as well with help. And you see on our scoreboard on the bottom of the screen, no timeouts you know, for the Falcons here. So the incomplete pass you know, stops the clock there. You know, so they could try to stake again here. Uh, but there's new signs of life here for the Falcons. And, again, we mentioned this level. A lot of the people on offense for Perry now back on defense. They got to quickly get over the interception. Colucci, he'll roll to his left. Long throw, catch made. Is that Yoder? That is Yoder. Gets a foot down inbounds a minute four and gets out of bounds. So while it will be third down, big play there to stop the clock and get some yardage on second down. I want to go back to that interception real quick, Double A's. Falcons are going quick. We've been talking about it so many times, that throw back across the body and throwing into traffic was Moses. That time, not as lucky, and Pumneo makes him pay. Falcons with a third and four at the Pirate 36. Clock stopped a minute four to go. Colucci looking to his right, continues to look, has a man open, gets inside the 30, and it'll be a first down for the Falcons. Clock will stop as they move the chains. It'll be a first and 10, the Pirate 29, quickly back to the line, good organization from the Falcons offense. Colucci rolling, gets out of a tackle, finds his man, backs out of bounds. Pumneo this time. 48 seconds, clock stopped. It might bring up a second in long one. But now the Falcons finding that space on the edge and maybe a little bit more energy in that sideline after that turnover. Yeah, good good look there. Ponio was in there. Uh, Gill on the previous uh, catch. And just good work there, just finding open guys. And you take what you could get. And... 
what happens when you do that, you really don't eat up that much clock. You play disciplined football, you're getting out of bounds, and Falcons created new opportunities. Second and one, the Pirate 20. Colucci back to pass again. And he gets picked off by Richards. Threw it into traffic. Richards playing free safety, and he's still on the loose. And he gets across the 20, and then a flag flies at the end of that play. Another opportunity for the Falcons to crack the scoreboard. Richard says no. We'll see what the call is after, you know, but sometimes you get in the you get in the situations in the playoffs where you just wanna you wanna make that play. You you wanna make that key play to get things back in the track. And maybe the key play is a play later. You know, maybe you needed to find you know, get a little bit closer, and it's just that's just tough. Richards making the right play, came it across, read the quarterback, and got the interception, the second of the game. And Colucci throwing, it looked like he was definitely eyeing his his target the entire time. With it's second and one, you wonder trying to keep the Pirates honest. Run play there. You have seen your team organized. Even if you get the first down, the clock stop for, stops for a second. You know it's going to run quickly thereafter. But again, another penalty on the Pirates and the Falcons go offsetting penalties on right. the interception return. So, so were both penalties after the interception, or were they both before? We'll wait the call. Because if they were both before, Referees are mic'd up here tonight. So they were both after the play, as we heard there. The Pirates declined the face mask penalty as uh, then the Falcons were just able to except the illegal block in the back on the return. But again, another interception. We were just saying second down and one. Had a chance to get on the scoreboard, trying to make a play. You can't fault for fault Colucci. They've had a great connection, him and Pumnio. Now the Pirates will just take a knee. Falcons cannot stop the clock. Will not have to run another play. So the Pirates will go into the locker room with a 14 to nothing lead, outscoring opponents in the first half. We do have the replay of the interception in just one second, but Pirates have outscored their opponents in the first half in these first two games of the playoffs, 74 to nothing. Yeah, let's take a look back here at the interception. You know, it's just dropping back, and there's just so much traffic. There's so much traffic right there, and it makes it tough. When that interception happened, you know, there was still plenty of time left to maybe find another open man on the other side, you know, but it just did not happen. And a very competitive playoff field. Remember, both of these offenses averaged, what, 37 points a game? I don't know if we're going to get to 37 points on these teams because these defenses have been locked in on both sides. I don't know if we will get to 37 points for either one. We thought maybe we were going to see that on one side, but – Credit to the Falcons defense for stepping up, keeping the team in the football game, but some mistakes near the end zone, keeping points off the board. A crucial possession for the Falcons coming out of halftime, but we have hit halftime with the Pirates from Perry, Ohio, on top 14 to nothing over the Navarre Fairless Falcons. Stay tuned. We will have the performances at halftime of both marching bands. Fairless getting set to go right now. Perry will be just after, and Double A Anthony Alford, myself, Kevin Arnold, will be back for your second half action for your CBC TV Playoff Game of the Week, presented by the Ohio Center for Oral, Facial, and Implant Surgery. Stay tuned right here with the Screen Valley Conference.
Welcome back to your CBC TV playoff game of the week presented by the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. My name is Kevin Arnold. I am joined by AA Anthony Alford. We are in Perry, Ohio tonight for the Division V Region 17 Regional Quarterfinal matchup between the number three seed Perry Pirates, who are on top 14 to nothing over the number six seed Fairless Falcons, who were in a similar situation last week and found themselves down at halftime as well to Orville, but came back to win that football game. They will get the football to start the second half. Before we get into the second half here in Perry, Double A, what is going on around the rest of the Chagrin Valley Conference in week two of the playoffs? And again, we have five CVC teams in action here, all the playoff action here tonight. Uh, Cuyahoga Heights in the third quarter, leading 7-0 over Youngstown Valley Christian. Uh, over in Kirtland, they are up at halftime, 29-6 over United Golden Eagles. Lutheran West up 10-0 over Holy Name at halftime. And Chardon with a 21-0 lead. That is in the second quarter against Geneva. And right here, right now, a 14-0 lead for Perry. Five CVC teams in action in the playoffs tonight. And Fairless coming out of the halftime break. Like we said, they will get the football. They get their special teams unit. Out on the field first, just a few seconds still on the clock available for these teams to get warmed up. And boy, AA Perry warmed up quickly to this football game. And a name we mentioned a lot to start in our social media pregame hit, in our pregame hit here on CBC TV, Chagrin Valley Conference.com, and the Chagrin Valley Conference YouTube channel. Braden Richards was the man in that first quarter getting the Pirates to that 14 0 lead. One one-yard touchdown run and one seven-yard receiving touchdown from Richards. But that was it. The Falcons stepped up defensively after that. Yeah, and Richards just all over the place. Uh, we want to thank Perry for providing live stats on digitalscout.com. Uh, offensively on the ground, six attempts, 51 yards of the touchdown, and also one reception for seven yards. But on the defensive side, Richards with two interceptions. But to your point, Kevin, uh, Fairless has been on the money defensively for the most part for the exception of those early two drives. If they can limit the turnovers, that's going to be critical as they start with the football in the second half. And the Falcons playmakers back deep, Pumneo and Yoder. Moses with that short kickoff again into no man's land, and this time Fairless will just jump on top of it. Looks like... Zachary Long, an up man, just jumps on top of it at the 34-yard line, and that is where the Falcons will start offensively. They had a couple drives towards the end of that first half, not able to capitalize turnovers and interception, a crucial interception with about 35 seconds left. Feels like one of the most important possessions of the ball game already just at the halfway point. Yeah, and even on the kick return just a little bit ago, the two back lines moved up as well to ensure that they got the return. So Carson Colucci leads the team out, and he will hand to Peter Killey, the running back, for a few yards over the 35, out to the 37-yard line, gain of three. It'll be a second and seven for this Falcons offense. Yeah, I want to see a little bit more of Killey, you know, running the football. You know, he's been out, you know, on the field for the majority of the first half, you know, but... I want to see the Russia attack go. He has the skills and the talent 
to operate, and this offensive line could drive down the field against this defense. Let's see them get that opportunity. Now Colucci throwing and looking up before he secured that pass. Andy Gill saw some space in front of him, drops to the turf third and seven. Yeah, and it's just a good opportunity there um, with that. And we'll see what the officials. They're sending a, yep. they're sending uh, Brock Christian off. I'm not sure if there's something that uh, they may have saw, maybe an injury. These officials are always keeping an eye on, especially the head and neck area. We'll never speculate on any injuries here, but they're always keeping an eye out for anybody that might be laboring, any student athlete laboring out there to get them over to their training staffs and the great training staffs at each high school in Northeast Ohio get supplied with. A third down and seven from their own 37. A screen pass now to Killy. He'll push it out to the 39-yard line. Only a gain of two on the screen. Good stop by the Pirate defense. It'll bring up a fourth down and five for the Falcons, trailing 14-0 just about a minute into the third quarter. Great job by McCoon, the sophomore linebacker, reading his guards, reading the play, and, and making the play on the outside. If he did not make that play, more than likely the Falcons would have had a first down. Ethan Lautzenheiser on to punt the football away from about his 30-yard line. He'll send Richards back to his 25 where he collects. Has a wall of Falcons in front of him, gets away, and he'll go down at the 28-yard line, and that is where the Pirate offense will take over. A quick three and out from the Falcons, especially with the adjustments made in the locker room. So now this defense going to have to step up. Still only a two-possession game. Just feels like the Pirates have had that control to start. Falcons defense, what is going to be the key to try to continue to keep them in it until that offense can find a rhythm? Well, the key is going to be, again, keeping everything in front. And this Perry offense has not had a sustained scoring drive down the field from deep in their own end of the field. Both possessions have been off a short field. Richards goes in motion. Studio gets the handoff. Dragon defenders with them out across the 40 to the 43 yard line, gain of 14 on first and 10. I was saying, I said earlier, we put the focus on a lot of players. You almost forget about Jaden Studio. You forget about him just running up the gut. He runs smooth, but there's power there. You can tell he takes, you know, leg day seriously with the way he was breaking those tackles uh, late in that run. And what? Yards after contact, probably looking at, what, five, six yards after contact that last play? Gets the first down. Toted the Rock 95 times coming into this game. Now Richards gets on the outside with that speed. A first down, continuing to push for extra yardage. Gets inside Falcon territory, down to the 45-yard line. Another gain of 12. So two big plays to start this Pirate drive. Big run by uh, Richards as well. Uh, but again, Studio, after the big running play that he just had, he goes right back. He's, he's asked to block on the play. He hauls his behind out there upfield, and that's set up and help Richards get the first down on the outside perimeter. 9.58, clock stops. Now Moses goes under center. He'll pitch it to Richards. Yoder, shoestring tackle. Flag down at the 38-yard line of the Falcons. We'll see what the call is as the back judge comes to talk to the head official here this evening, and they'll bring in side judge as well. Gain of seven on first down from Richards. And the officials all game long, they've been communicating with each other, just making sure that they get the correct call. Um, and doing the delay, they're announcing the 50-50 winner, and um, Kevin will be uh, getting my prize for me um, <laughs> after the third quarter. <laughs> hey, I know the PA announcer here tonight, so if there's anybody that's getting it. <laughs> He's like, you get dibs. If I'm going to get the prize, you know where that's going. It's going right in my pocket. Well, this penalty is going to be on the defense after the play. And it looked like the back judge had come up 
and was indicating early on a, a personal foul. It kind of hit those two wrists together as if there was a personal foul. And that's a 15-yard addition to the end of that run. So now first and 10 at the Falcon 20 are the Perry Pirates. They're in the red zone, and we've seen them cash in here tonight. Richards on the pitch, over the 15, over the 10, still going inside the five, down to the three-yard line, first and goal. Perry, 17-yard gain. They'll actually move it back a yard to the four-yard line, so 16 yards, but still, Richards, tough to bring down. He runs angry. He runs angry, Richards. And when he's lined up at the tailback position, just assume he's going to get the football. And the first initial contact is not going to bring him down. You need multiple hats on the football anytime Richards has it or else he's gaining an extra set of yards. 12 seconds on the play clock. First and goal, Perry from the Falcon four-yard line. Richards on the pitch again, and he goes in untouched around the right side. Richards, second rushing touchdown of the game. One of one yard, this time from four yards out. And 9.07 to go. Perry adds to their lead, 20 to nothing. Great run, of course, by Richards. Adding on to that, Want to give credit as well on the outside. Gavin Nickerson, the junior lineman out there, making the block on the outside. And that really helped the cause. Offensive line put it in work all game long. Hunter Orinyak comes on for the extra point. Snap back, ball down, kick on its way, end over end, and good. So Perry. Gets the stop coming out of halftime. Cashes in on a 71-yard drive. Capped off with the four-yard touchdown run from Braden Richards. It has been the Braden Richards show here tonight. 9.07 to go, third quarter. Perry 21, Fairless nothing. Yeah, and just we was wondering if Perry was able to get a sustained drive down the field from their own end zone, and they've been able to do that. Let's take a look at what happened. Look at the blocking, just getting on the outside. And Richards, just with the speed, able to get it done. You see the blocking up front, driving, driving the defensive line into the end zone. And the Pirates doing their thing to start on the offensive side in the third quarter. And I think to look at, back at, at that drive, yes, there was the penalty to aid in the Pirates getting closer to the end zone, but it was a pitch play to Richards really most of the way, and we mentioned it towards the end of the half. Falcons were down two scores. They were trying to go for it all. Pirates, the biggest difference is being under control. When they've had the opportunity to score, they have, and they've taken what the defense has given them. Yeah, and they definitely have. And How about with that drive as well. You start with Studio with a couple of big games, and then you switch over to Richards. So it's just that inside-out game, and, you know, when you zero in on one person, good luck. Another short kickoff gotta get from to that the ball. Pirates. Got to get to it, as AA said, but it'll be out of bounds. So Richards a, almost got it. <laughs> that speed, I'm telling you, it's – to have that kind of speed that Richards does, and he is a big star on the Perry track team as well. To have that kind of speed, but able to use it, utilize it on the football field and, and the way that Bob Gesowich coming in, coaching this Perry Pirate program that again is another, is one of those proud programs of football here in Northeast Ohio, a lot of tradition. Typically you see Perry in that division four, region 13, now down in division five, region 17, Guess which has found a way to get Richards the ball. We thought at one point when we started doing CBC TV, Richards would be that QB of the future for them. He's just become that Mr. Everything. As Nick Paulus, who used to be a color commentator on here, we always used to say, give out the Mr. Everything at the end of the game. He is the definition of that. Now the Falcons come out on offense. They'll give Killy a handoff. They may have lost a yard back to the 40-yard line. A second and 11 for the Falcons. One other thing I want to point out about Richards as well, a lot of times in college, you know, when you play quarterback in high school, you're really good at it, and it's like you get that college scholarship, and the coach tells you, all right, we'll get you the scholarship, you're going to have to change positions. 
going to have to do something else. And imagine being told that at high school, like, hey, we may not, you may not be able to start a quarterback. Do you still want to be on the field? And you say, you say yes, and it's like, I'm going to do everything possible to be on the field. And Richards has maximized on his opportunities on both sides of the ball. Colucci trying to set up the screen to Yoder. That goes nowhere. Yoder dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Another loss of a yard on a play. It'll be third and long. Looked like may have been Brian Cox that got in there to make the hit. And it'll be third and 12 at their own 39-yard line. And I think Thomasick also on the outs from the opposite side of the defense came over and got that big hit. And just defensively, you know, we saw about which one of these defensive backs are going to be able to step up and make things happen. And it has not been a problem for this Perry defense. Colucci drops back. Gets some pressure, tries to get out of there. Spin move over the 40, Be continues to spin. Over the 42, out to the 43. A lot of spins, a lot of circle buttons on the old controller, but doesn't gain many yards, and it'll bring up a fourth down at their own 43-yard line. Looks like uh, Laut uh, Lautenheiser is going to come out and punt the football away again still in their own territory. One of those occasions where you needed the circle button followed by the square button <laughs> after you held the X button for so long. Uh, only thing I'll say about that, control the football, hold on to it. Lautzenheiser punts it to Richards who calls for the fair catch, grabs it at his 20 yard line and will give uh, punting unit four Falcons a lot of credit as well. They have pinned Richards back, they've been keying in on getting him near that sideline, pinning him in. They've done a good job of that. And looks like the Perry offense will come back out. May have been a flag on that play as well. There is one on the far side. And personal foul on the Pirates. That'll move them back deep. So three score game. Perry on top 21 to nothing. 6.54 to go third quarter here in Perry, Ohio. Kevin Arnold Joined by Double A Anthony Elford and the CBC TV crew. Braden Richards is the name we've been calling all night long in this one. He has two rushing touchdowns, one receiving touchdown here tonight. This is, if there was a crucial stand for the Falcons defense, after this personal foul penalty, Pirates back at their own 10 yard line, got to find a way to get a stop deep in the pirate territory yeah they got and they got to find out quick they got to figure out right now at this point uh with this defense and it's been tricky to do it studio on the carry making a couple guys miss out of a tackle over the 15 over the 20 it'll be a first down flag comes out gets out out of bounds at his own 40 yard line but a hold on perry will bring this one back again. So a couple key penalties will keep the Pirates hemmed in deep in their own territory. Didn't need to do it. Studio getting that foot in the ground, making those quick jump cuts, and then getting to the outside. Yeah, that's going to be something. Uh, should Perry hold on and win this football game here tonight? That's going to be something that we'll be focused on You know, tomorrow morning and Monday at film study. It's going to be, all right, as you move on in these playoff rounds, and you face more competition. Again, remember, after this round, all games are at neutral site until the state championship in Canton. You know, this is where you're going to start to have to zero in on penalties and limiting those because it's been an alarmingly high number in this game for, uh, for Perry. So it'll be a first down and 12, it looks like, from their own eight-yard line. Pirates. Moses in the shotgun, one teammate on either side. Moses with the snap, he'll hand off to Richards, going to the right, far side of the field, over the 10, over the 15, over the 20, and just dragged out of bounds. Looks like Yoder again making another touchdown, potential saving tackle. Yoder's been all over the field on defense. They haven't been able to find him on offense, but Richards, even after the penalty, still gets the Pirates more breathing room. And a first down. And there's been success running on the outside on the perimeter all game long. 
on both sides. They've been doing it primarily on their right side of the field, uh, but it's been a success, you know, with this Perry offense all game long running on the perimeter. Perry first and 10 at their own 27 yard line, leading 21 to nothing in this regional quarterfinal. Division five, region 17, running back slips. Offensive lineman goes down as well, and then a flag comes out late as Rockwell and by Gill, Andy Gill from the Falcons, having some words with each other. Rockwell being ushered to the sideline. So even though you're up three scores, the mental, the mental mistakes allowing maybe some of that John going back and forth, saying things you shouldn't be saying. Well, and again, it's, it's an emotional football game. It's playoffs. You know, you're taught to play through the whistle. And, Kevin, you're right. As that was on Rockwell. You're right, you know, as far as getting that control and bringing that in. And they'll address it. They will address it. The one thing you will point out, and, again, Digital Scout, Perry, want to thank them for providing. Going into that play, Perry – Perry has eight penalties that's cost him 85 yards, and that doesn't count the, the previous uh, play here just now. That's going to be a number that if that does not come down in the future, uh, it's going to be some problems. Moses with the snap. He'll hand to Richards. Cuts left, now goes right. He's got some space over the 30, over his own 40, over midfield, up the right sideline, 40. 35 and out of bounds at the 32 yard line of the Falcons. It is great to have the equalizer of Braden Richards out there and he gets a first down and more. Let's take a look here at how it got set up and happening. The blocking's on point at first level. And then second level, he just takes off with the speed. Oh, he's doing a little dancing, you know, there and get the extra yards there and it's just smooth. It's operating with his hips. And just being able to, you know, judge what you do. Sometimes you focus so much defensively on just getting him down. You got to look at the hips as well. Otherwise, otherwise you're going to be dancing. <laughs> you don't want to dance on, on defense. First down and 10 at the Falcon 31. Owen McCoon gets three down to the 28. Second and seven. Perry, for those maybe tuning in to us here tonight. On CBC TV, we'll get you other CBC scores here in the quarter break, but a score going on in Detroit, Michigan. The Cavaliers on a six-game win streak. They are 6-1 and one on the season. They are up 87-68, to 68, up 19 over the Pistons in the third quarter. I know Jason is running one of our cameras. I know he um, has little details on that game, so I'm going to talk to him after the game, kind of see what happens. Well, as I, as I look at the box score, it looks like Jared Allen having a big game without Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. We'll get back to that here in a second. Perry on a drive. Pass out in the flat. Goes to Owen Tomasic. And he gets inside the 20 and another first down for the Pirate offense. And he's been, again, just moving, you know, just around. And I like how this offense and this offensive line is able to adapt moving side to side, and the blocking helps make that happen. It's the big part of why this is happening and against this 4-2-5 uh, Falcons defense. Walter Moses, quarterback for Perry. He'll give to McCoon, who's inside the 10. Jumps, cuts, and in to the end zone. Made one final cut about the three-yard line, jump right to left, and there was nothing but pay dirt to hit 27 nothing Perry in control. Well, let's take a look here. It's just the blocking just there. McCoon going around. He's like, you guys up here in the booth been talking about studio. You guys up in the booth been talking about Richards. McCoon's like, I'm going to get mines too. And he did uh, running that football. The blocking was set up there perfectly uh, as well. And he really made that happen. Arignac. Converts the extra point again. He is four for four this evening. 28-0 
Perry on top of Fairless. 451 still left in the third quarter. McCoon getting his name on the score sheet. And he said, hey, Braden Richards, I know you can jump cut. I know you can get out in open space. Let me show you a little footwork of my own, a little dance move of my own. And he pays it off just like Richards has done several times here tonight. Perry all over this one now, outscoring opponents 88-8 to here in Division 5 playoff football. It's early. We're only about one game and three quarters of the way through, but this Perry offense, not many answers out there to start the playoffs and a tough team to bring down to the ground, a tough team to figure out with so many different guys that can hit you, so many different change of pace that can get you out there on the field. And I also want to give credit as well on that office of score uh, to lineman Anthony Zaraki, uh, number 55. He was looking for somebody to block. He kept going up the field and was trying to get somebody to, 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 to block. And because of his path, that led to – McCoon scoring as well because nobody wanted to touch <laughs> Zaraki. So you get that, you get your linemen to work hard, your skill players will be rewarded. The whole team will be rewarded. Moses, another short kick, and it'll be fielded by another Upman at the 38 yard line. So Perry likes to go, likes to bring their quarterback Moses out for those short kickoffs. It has proved dividends for them throughout the season to get the football right back. And they're just looking to fully put this one away. Fearless, just looking to put one drive together and maybe get that quick scoring offense, some rhythm to make a game of this as we tick down to the 448 mark left here in the third quarter. Carson Colucci out to Pumneo, who's been his main target here tonight. He gets out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Gain of five on first down, second and five. And that's where it has to start, you know, for Fairless. You know, just getting those few yards. You know, just get one score on the board. You know, and once you get that one score on the board, then you can start building from there. Uh, but so far, for whatever reason, it has not happened as these drives have progressed uh, for this offense. Colucci again, he'll give to Killy. Good run that time out of across the 45 to the 47 and a half yard line. Needs to get to the 48 yard line, so it'll be a third and one. Also, just to add, add on to all this, across high school football here in Northeast Ohio, we have been blessed tonight with great weather. It is warm, even Right now, it's almost 9 o'clock. It is about as warm as it could be at the top of November. It's incredible. It's going to be in the mid-70s tomorrow, Kev. It's, it's amazing. So these players here tonight, they can just play free football and not have to even have a lick of concern with the weather. Colucci calls his own number, going for the first down. Gets st stuck right at the first down marker, so gets the yard he needs. But a good tackle in open space by the Perry Pirates. First and 10, clock moves, 3.52 to go. And again, there's still time left. And defensively, this Pirates defense, they know that. You know, and they know how important it is. You know, keep everything in front of them. That is the main task. And that's something that they're going to have to do. Pirates defense, and the 3-4 defense. Colucci swing pass into no man's land. He was looking for Pumneo. And looked like Landon Seal got blocked right back into that screen pass, got pushed back. And luckily, that one fell to the turf, or else that might have been six more for this Pirates defense. And if you looked at Washington Jr., he's like, that should have been a pick six. That should have been. He's like, man, that ball is right there. Saw the green there. The ball just didn't, you know, for, for fearless purposes, the ball dropped at a good spot for them. Otherwise, Defense was taking that to the house. Pistol formation, two receivers either side of the formation. Going left, Colucci goes down awkwardly on that throw. Comes up limping, wasn't able to step into that throw. 
So third and 10 now for the Falcons and concern, I'm sure, on that Falcon sideline for their signal caller, Carson Colucci, who has had a good game here tonight. The Pirates defense just stepped up when they needed to. Yeah, and the other thing that's happened, we've been wondering what's been going on with Yoder, number 18, the target. What's, well, what's been happening is that every time the safety's dropping back along with the cornerback. And a sack. Jaden Studio comes right up the middle. As he stands over Colucci a little too long there, but Studio gets the sack. And it'll be a fourth and a mile for the Falcons offense. Lautzenheiser comes back out to punt the football away. They know, they know defensively, hey, you got, we're gonna bring the house. And they did just that. And, you know, again, thankfully everyone's okay, but Studio happened to be there to speed from that position, he gets it done. Lautzenheiser, side winding kick drives Richards all the way back and this one will actually roll on the turf into the end zone for a touchback football will come out to the 20 yard line too much of a line drive on that one to get that to kick up so they kind of just skipped across the turf good punt from Lautzenheiser but comes out to the 20 so first and 10 for this pirate offense who is just an absolute machine right now came in winning four straight after losing to Kirtland who I know is up in their playoff game as well 42 to 6 right now both of these teams came in on four game winning streaks but the Pirates have just had every answer here tonight at home and it's been operation and and as long as they haven't been getting in, in their own way they've been on the move Pass comes out, and just on cue as the broadcaster curse, I guess you could say, comes in. Owen Tomasic, who had some space out here in the flat, drops the pass, so getting in their own way there brings up a second and 10. Sorry, Double A, you know I always have to give you, Yeah, we, we've worked yeah, together for so was, long. Yeah, that was, that was deserved. Time. Yeah, that was, that. <laughs> gotta make the catch next time. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Go, oh, go ahead and call the next play, Kev. <laughs> well, no, Kevin Arnold, double-A Anthony Alford on the call here for CBC TV. Pirates with the second and ten. Studio just got that big sack. Gets a carry. A couple yards out to the 22-23 yard line is where the down marker goes. So a three-yard gain, third and seven. And now clock will stop. Officials time out if you were at a Cleveland Monsters game unfortunately there is a player down on the far side um, we won't uh, Cleveland Monsters of course if you're at those games they do say they ask what official when you say that but you never want to see any of these student athletes go down to the ground training staff quickly out good job by the teammates to kind of keep an eye on there as well so uh Thompson, who just who dropped the ball a little bit ago, the studio's back up to his feet. He's like, bruh, that's on me. I didn't want to drop that ball. When they went to the huddle doing the injury timeout, he just did push-ups in the huddle. That's And that's a culture thing yeah. right there. You know that if a player is doing that because he knows he's going to have to do that at practice anyways, or if they make those mistakes in practice, that's something that Coach Gessowich, this coaching staff with Perry, has been having them do. That's a team that has that is that is disciplined and know when they make a mistake, pay the consequence, go back and make a good play. And, and they hold a good chance. And they hold each other accountable too. And that's something you want to see, you know, from a team like you want to see from every team. But this team, they do a great job. They love being around each other. Moses rolls to his right, has Rockwell out across the thirty, and it'll be a first down at the thirty-four yard line. Their own thirty-four. Good route there by Rockwell, slow developing, but a good throw across his body for Moses. Yeah, Rockwell, big man, senior, 6'3", 210 pounds. He's not only a huge target out on the field, it's hard to bring him down. You know, remember the plays he had earlier in the game where he's been finding the zone, kind of getting back to that against this defense. Flag flies before the first and 10 snap. The head official saw something. False start on the offense. 
Looks like Chuck Thomas when the offensive lineman moving before the snap. So a first and 10 to a first and 15. 207 left. Perry in control in the third quarter, 28 to nothing in a regional quarterfinal matchup here in Division 5, Region 17. And your CBC TV playoff game of the week presented by the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. We'll tell you more about them in just a moment. But first, first and 15 from their own 29 come the Pirates. Moses, shotgun. Rolling to his right, looks to pass, has a man open, and that might be Rockwell up the sideline. Or actually, that is Tomasic up the sideline. So dropped one early, paid the price, did his push-ups, and that time Moses rewards him, had his, the confidence, and he goes for a big play down to the Falcon 38-yard line. And again, working with the receiver, or working with the quarterback, receiver-quarterback combination, and all the receivers have been able to do that. And Moses, his development, again, he's only a sophomore. You know, Walter Moses is only a sophomore quarterback. The awareness that he has to be able to extend plays and find open guys out on the field, it's been amazing to see for anybody at the sophomore level. McCoon getting this handoff over the 30. Looks like a first down again. Inside the 30 at the 27. And it is all systems go for this Pirates offense now. Moses comes skipping over to his head coach. Moses is in full control right now, Kevin. And I just, look, when you're a sophomore, you know, you know he's been in these positions, you know, as a freshman, he's been involved in these games, but now taking over the starting offense this year, you know, to have that confidence, to have that leadership, and guess what? Even after this run, he has two more years to do this, to continue to grow his mind and his body. And it's been incredible to watch this young man perform and lead this football team. First and 10 from the 27. McCoon again makes a man miss, gets another first down inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. McCoon adding some yardage to his stat line already with a touchdown here tonight as well. Yeah, McCoon has been... He's one of those guys, look, they, you know, the defense having to contain Richards and, and Studio, and speaking of Studio, he's coming back into the game. Um, but McCoon, you know, his big size, being able to get in there, six foot, 175 pounds, and when he's moving the football, that's huge. That's going to be huge. It'll really be huge, too, whenever the weather becomes cooler. He's going to be somebody that's going to be hard to tackle. Snap, goes to studio. He'll get a carry this time. Gets two yards down to the 14, second and eight. 35 seconds left on the third quarter clock. Pirates do not have to run another play here in the third quarter if they do not want to. But if you are the Falcons, you do want to, I mean, obviously get the stop, uh, of course, but you want to be able to build some positive momentum you know, get one drive. At this point, it's one drive at a time. You get one stop, you're back out offense. Maybe you make a play offensively. You're on the scoreboard, and again, anything can happen. But to this point, the Perry Pirates, one quarter away from the next round and sending these fans home happy in their final home game of the 2022 football season. And the whistle does blow for the end of the third quarter. Perry on top of Fairless, 28 to nothing. They are just 12 minutes away from a regional semifinal berth here in Division 5, Region 17, winner of this game facing either the number 10 seed West Lafayette, Ridgewood, or Sugar Creek Garraway looking for a score from that game if we can here in just a little bit. This is your CBC TV playoff game of the week presented by the Ohio Center for Oral, Facial, and Implant Surgery. Their doctors, Keith Schneider, Don Lewis, and Joe Weber will help you with dental surgery, implants, corrective jaw, and facial surgery, along with trauma reconstruction for all those oral surgery needs. Visit www.ohsurgery.com. That's www.ohsurgery.com. We thank them for their support. This is Grand Valley Conference and CBC TV. Double A real quick. CBC action going on around Northeast Ohio in round two of the playoffs. Scores as we see them right now. Yeah, let's take a look at them here, uh, Kirtland. They're on their way to the next round, 42-6 to six over United. 
We'll get you more scores after this play. Second down and eight from the Falcon 14 yard line. Studio making a man miss again. Inside the 10 down to the five yard line. Should be first and goal. Pirates it is at the five yard line. Sharding up over Geneva 28 to seven. Fourth quarter, holy name up over Lutheran West 13 to 10. And Cuyahoga Heights, they're the close one against Valley Christian of Youngstown, 10 to six there in the third quarter. And other action still to come this weekend on CBC TV as we have a moment in the officials' time out. Uh, Pirates huddling up. Looks like they bump up the play clock there. Everything stops as the back judge and the head official talk. More CBC action still to come here this weekend as we will have the soccer all-star games for both, both the boys and the girls coming up on Sunday. Boys starting at noon, girls at 2 live from Hawken Upper School coming up this Sunday. Right now, first and goal from the five for the Pirates. Studio with the carry and easily goes in to the end zone. Studio adds his name to the score sheet. 34 nothing. 11-29 left in the football game. Studio just handling his business. I think the way this football game is played out, this offensive line and receivers who are not called to get the football, they deserve the credit as well. You know, being able to be, to, to get after, hold each other accountable, make the necessary blocks against this very talent, you know, a very talented Falcons defense. This has been, this is a statement win or lead here. Extra points, good. This is obviously Perry holds on. This would be a statement W for Perry. This is a very good Falcons, you know, fearless Falcons team. And to be able to, at this moment, get a shutout against this team, it's been incredible. Absolutely. And you look at that Falcons team, it would be a great win against fearless as they came in with a quarterback that had thrown coming in for about 2,500 yards through 11 games, two receivers that had basically gone caught a thousand yard, a thousand yard receivers, two in Brody Pumneo and Luke Yoder. Pumneo has had a decent game, but Yoder has been kept quiet. And the Pirates, since halftime, have scored 21 points, 35 to nothing, only giving up eight points this playoff run so far. Well, Perry's been dropping the safeties too. I mean, and you talk about like a big threat. Okay, try to make something happen against these top, you know, against our DBs when we drop a corner and safety on you on both sides. That's been an equalizer defensively. And of course, Perry, if they do hold on, they would move on to the regional semifinals to face the winner of Garraway High School and Ridgewood High School. Right now, the Garraway Pirates on top of the Ridgewood Generals, 21 to six in the fourth quarter. So we could see the number two seed against the number three seed, a little chalk in Division Five, Region 17. Two Pirates possibly going at it, but 11-29 still left in this ball game, and the Falcons will get the football back. Pirates go away from those short kickoffs. This time, Arignac take, uh, kicks it off, and a good return for the Falcons out to the 45-yard line. Anthony Stutler. Give some of these guys with speed a chance. Perry feeling a little more comfortable to kick the football away. Stutler said, let me get my hands on this football. Let me get a good start for my offense here with 11 minutes to go. Yeah, and again, it's a 48-minute football game, so every play matters. And it doesn't matter what the scoreboard is. Every play matters. Get that big play, you'll be good to go. The other thing to point out, too, as you kind of look at the next round, again, all these games after this round is on neutral sites. Colucci, a dangerous pass, almost picked off by Shiano. He has been reading things well. He has come up. You've talked about it, Double A. They're dropping the safeties back, even giving a little bit of cushion from the cornerbacks. But Shiano has gotten in his drop, planted that foot, and read these little crossing pattern, patterns well all night And, long. Kevin, he's handling his business. The one complaint he'll have coming out of this game He'll probably feel like he, he, he should have had two interceptions here tonight. Uh, two opportunities that were dropped. But other than that, defending, he's been on target. Colucci gets it to Pumneo. 
Maybe a gain of one, bring up a third and nine. Colucci in this second half just has not had the time or the ability to set his feet that time throwing off of his back foot. And only a gain of one. Him and Pumnio, really those, those two bright spots, what, what has been working for the Falcons here tonight. Yeah, so really, when your game plan defensively is, okay, we're gonna drop back those, you know, the safeties, then you're putting the responsibilities on, you know, your front seven and saying, hey, you guys are gonna kind of be on your own to be able to stop everything underneath. Credit to these linebackers, credit to the defensive front for being able to communicate all game long, get to their assignments and go from there and even getting to their assignments. And in this case, the Falcons having to call timeout here. So the Falcons will call timeout first of the half. They will be left with two with 9.48 to go. It is 35-0, Perry. So we are under the Ohio High School Athletic Association running clock rules here in the second half. A game that was, Perry looked like they were going to run away with early. Falcons defense stood tall. Two-score game. And coming out of halftime, the Falcons had the football and going three and out quickly allowed the Pirates to get that offense going once again, and they just have not stopped. Yeah, let's go real quick to uh, digitalscout.com. Again, want to thank Perry for providing uh, the stats here tonight. And the difference has been on the ground. I mean, you know, Fairless, 19 attempts, 23 yards. Perry, 31 attempts on the ground, 281 yards, combined yards, you know, and that's with, you know, what? Um, Studio, Richards, McCoon, a little bit of Moses in there as well. It's been a team effort running the football for this team. Yoder finally getting his hands on a football. Goes out to the 47-and-a-half yard line into Pirate territory. It'll be a fourth and three, and you expect the Falcons to, to go for it here. Again, running clock here in the fourth quarter. And you look at these stats, 147 through the air, 281 on the ground for the Pirates. Boy, it's just decent balance, but it has been that run game that has done it for the Pirates here tonight. Colucci looks to pass on fourth and three, rolls to his right, throws into coverage, and somehow tips it back to Yoder. Pumnio, a little push pass back on the lateral to Yoder at a first down. That was an awesome play. That was a phenomenal play just to be able to again, communicate offensively, knowing where your teammates are, and the pitch back is just, just incredible. And again, credit this Falcons defense, not, or offense, excuse me, not giving up here. It's, hey, playoff football all the way, all the way to the end, Kevin. Owen McCoon comes out of the ball game. As he'll get subbed in, Jason Pentec comes running in off that Perry sideline. They stopped the clock briefly, may have either equipment issue or minor injury there from McCoon, so he'll come to the sideline. And a first and 10 for the Falcons. Colucci, pistol formation, Killy right behind him. Colucci waits on the snap, now he gets it. Turn. Fake the handoff, Colucci throws, and right into the waiting arms. There he is, that is Shiano. On the return, over the 30, still on his feet, over the 35, and I believe that's the third interception of Colucci here tonight. Shiano finally gets his hands on the football. He had two attempts, let's take a look. He had two opportunities. This was the third opportunity to get the interception. Again, it's just the offense just trying to get something set up. But you see there, you see his leg. Uh, the quarterback's just kind of, you know, falling down a little bit, not getting enough air. It's just being in the right position, and it's been that story all game long for this Perry defense. And they have shown out, and they are back on offense. Back on offense, as I believe that's a drone over the, over the field. We've seen that uh, be an issue throughout the year face mask penalty coming on the Falcons defense. Good attempt and good run for the Pirates. A couple yards to add to that 281 coming into this drive. Scott Stang gets a carry, but definitely that face mask, you saw it get turned there. 
And that'll be a 15 yard penalty, giving the Pirates a little bit more breathing room on this drive. And right now, you know, you're starting to see some of the backups in for Perry. And this is the opportunity for these guys. You know, they worked hard at practice. They're a part of this as well. You know, they're on a scout team, you know, on offense, the defense. They're the ones responsible for putting in the look, you know, for, you know, that the Falcons were going to operate, you know, some of these players. All right, special teams, let's get the call real quick here. So actually, offsetting penalties, it looks like. Hold on the offense, face mask on the defense. So just scrap that from the record book there and go right back to a first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. I know technically the play doesn't count, but, you know, Scott Stang, you know, he's going to be one of those players getting the opportunity. He just ran the football there. A bit ago, I like the second effort. When he was hit with the face mask, he kept driving his legs, and he got a few extra yards there. Those are the kind of things, you know, as a freshman, you're going in, that looks good on tape. Moses will hand off to Stang. Gets over the 35, good run over the 40. Still on his feet, gets out of a tackle, and then gets stood up at the He's still going. Four yard line, somehow <laughs> still going. Referees allowing them to play. He gets 11 yards, tough earn. Scott Stang, what a run. And the sideline for Perry was excited to see that. Let's take a look at that run again because just getting a second effort. Now the only thing is, got to tuck that football in. That, you know, that was almost stripped. But just keeping that effort going and getting that first down. He was not supposed to get the first down, but he did just with that second effort is just keeping it going. Again, they'll point out, hey, young man, great run. Tuck that football in. Get that football tucked in, it will be an even better run. Great job there. So I had 11 yards to that total. Perry nearing 300 yards rushing, 292 on the ground and counting. Stang will get it again over the 50. Oh, down to the 47 of the Falcons. Be a Luke Yoder on the tackle again. He's been all over the place defensively. We mentioned it earlier, he came in as the tackle leader with 97 on the season. He's got, I believe, double digits here tonight in the tackle game. He just has not been able to find anything offensively. But Perry keeping that run game going, just allowing that clock to run. And there's a point I want to make about Walter Moses still being out there as quarterback here in just one second. But second down and two, man goes in motion, he'll get the handoff. Looks like Jimmy Ashburn. He'll get a first down, down to the 40. Another freshman. And that should put the Pirates over the 300-yard rushing mark. We'll check, check the stats at the end and stay with us at the end of the game. We'll do a quick, quick wrap-up here. We'll keep things right here and kind of give you what's next on CBC TV. But, but you had a point to make, though, about him, about Moses being in the game still. You're seeing a lot of young guys get in. Moses is a young guy himself. He is a sophomore. Mm -hmm. So to have Moses, the, the guy that is still going to be the signal caller through this playoff run, wherever that goes for Perry, and into the next two seasons, some of these younger guys that are going to fill in as each of these senior classes on, moves on, I think it's important to have these young guys continue to get those reps with the quarterback that's going to be with them, get those signals, get that timing down. Young offensive line, Young quarterbacks, young wide receivers, all going to be working together in the future. And important reps in a big game in the playoffs, I think, is big for the Pirates to continue the success that Gesowich has added upon in a good program, a great program here at Perry, a strong football lineage here at Perry High School. And, and let's just add on to that. Uh, Perry just called for a delay game just now. Uh, but on that offensive line, you have one, you have a senior, sophomore, junior, freshman, and sophomore. So to your point there, Kevin, you have pretty much a young offensive line getting work here as well, even as the starters keep it, you know, keep it going. And that is Scott Stang, not Scott Lang, Ant Man. That is Scott Stang on the run, but finding those little holes to to break through and continue to add to their rushing total for the Pirates. And you just said it. Young guys continue to play together. It, all, these, all these things we talk about, and, and we don't want to take away from what the Falcons have done here tonight and this season. We're going to make sure that we spotlight that here in just a second. 
but it's important to note, yes, Walter Moses is still out there, and some may question that, but there are reasons for that, and I think it's important. You're continuing to build for the future while having a successful season right here, right in front of you. Yeah, and that's, and that's been huge, you know, to this point. You think about all the things that, you know, the Falcons have had to overcome, you know, and you think of this battle, right? You got Perry out of Lake County, and we want to make clear this is Lake County Perry. This is not Maslin Perry. Yep. Um, but you got Perry out of Lake County. You got you have the Fairless Falcons out of Stark County. You got two. Look at this run. My goodness. Good run by Perry. They'll be it'll give an, another first down after a third down and three, and that should allow them to basically just run this clock out as their student section, their fans. Go to greet them. This will be the final home game for the Pirates. Of course, being the number three seed, if they do face Sugar Creek Garraway, they wouldn't be considered the home team. But all these games moving to neutral sites. So last game at Alumni Field for the 2022 season. Looks like Garraway still on top. That's a final now, too. Final, 21-6. Mm -hmm. to six. So it will be the Perry Pirates against the Garraway Pirates next week. We'll wait to see where that game will be. We'll get you all the other final scores around the CVC in our post-game wrap-up as well. Walter Moses takes the final knee. They do not have to run another play. Both teams will meet at midfield. But your final here tonight, Perry Pirates dominant. Once again, back-to-back -back weeks, they've won five games in a row, two games to start this playoff run. And they have scored a uh, 95 points, 95 to 8, outscoring their opponents in the first two games. An offense that is humming right now. And the final seconds tick off. The teams again meet good sportsmanship at midfield. Student section awaits. Final whistle blows. It is the Perry Pirates moving on to the regional semifinals in Division 5, Region 17, 35 to nothing. Incredible game uh, by the Pirates. Great game, and I'll tell you what. A lot of things that I've saw, that I've seen today, that we both seen today. This is a special football team. This is a very, very special football team, and there were some things we had about CVC TV against Geneva a few weeks ago, and even then you saw the talent, you saw the talent, but it's like, what are some of those things that you need to put it all together? Sometimes when you have a team that is mostly a young team, sometimes you just don't know how big these moments are. I'll tell you what, if they can stay locked in, the only thing is clean up the penalties. If they could do these things, this Perry team, I promise you, can make a deep run in this postseason. They are really, really good. They have all the ingredients to make a huge run in this playoffs. Organized, well coached. I mean, just look at them as they get into their post game talk. All of the guys on a knee already in a group happen very quickly. Not a lot of celebration. We have saw a couple couple gritties out there getting into getting into the post game talk, but listening to their coaches and ready for that next step. They they expected to win. They did win. They got the job done and they're moving on. And but you can't you can't cheapen what the Fairless Falcons have done. And I know, um, you know, they'll probably get a chance to watch this back. You don't, a lot of these kids, they don't get this spotlight a lot. Yes, we're on YouTube, but being filmed, uh, feeling like you're on TV, having that spotlight. And what a season. Back-to-back Pac-7 champions. Mm -hmm. They won for the first time. They won the conference for the first time in 42 years last year, matching a school record in wins that they set last year, this year with nine wins. Unfortunately, falling to nine and three today. But the the type of team and the type of culture that they've built at Fairless, a team that we don't get to see a lot, but a great team, great system. Coach Sarball can't thank him enough for spending some time with us before the game as well. It, we talk, we say it every time as we cover some of these playoff games. It's the bittersweet side of things. We've all been on both sides. You've played sports in high school. One team's got to win. One team's got to lose. It's the unfortunate cliche, but tonight, 
it was the Perry Pirates. And offensively, I don't know if the stats are, the final stats are up at all, double A. But we had mentioned kind of going into those last few minutes of the fourth quarter as the student section, I guess, rushes the field. They go to greet their, their team, and the football team goes to meet oh, their band yeah, now as it's well. Now a party. Now it's a party. Now it's a party out <laughs> here in Perry, Ohio. But uh, great show of respect for, you know, the band's part of it too. And the, the team, they have their rituals. They go over to greet their band and celebrate after getting the talk and knowing that the job is not done yet. They go on to next week. But we were just mentioning the run game for Perry. We knew that they were an explosive offense. They score about 37 and a half a game, a little less than that, 35 here tonight. They've done it through the air pretty well this year. Run game tonight was just spectacular. Yeah, the running game was was phenomenal. Um, again, a combination of you know of of Richards and Studio McCoon was in there, Moses, and then you know even uh, even uh, uh, Stang at, at the end of the game getting a few yards. You know the freshman getting there as well. To your point, real quick, um, and, and we're gonna kind of jump around just a bit here before we wrap about the Falcons. Uh, they're a really talented team, really talented group of guys. And to your point, Kevin, they have great leadership going forward. These seniors, uh, that this, this is their last game, they should be very proud of what they have done uh, with this program. You know, two straight nine and two, you know, two straight nine win seasons uh, for this Falcons team. And yeah, I mean, they're going to be disappointed. They got to drive back to Stark County. Um, but overall, They've done a phenomenal job, and they should be proud of what they have done. There's no beautiful way to exit the playoffs. There's no such thing, um, but they should be proud. And real quick on the on the Pirates, we'll give you a few stats here before we wrap. Uh, offensive yards in total, uh, the Falcons have 142. Uh, Pirates, 474 uh, total yards of offense. Um 38 rushing attempts for Perry for 327 yards. And that was really the difference. Also, I want to point out, third down, they were 4-7 on third down conversions um, as well. So a lot of the key things that they were able to do, it was just a complete team effort. They basically contained the top-level receivers uh, for the Falcons that we talked about going into this game. It was they had a hard time defending, you know, the corners and safeties dropping back against their top receivers, and you know the linebackers and you know defensive tackles handled their business. So you got a team now; they're in an excellent position to really get things going. Uh, but the one thing I will point out again, you know, get those penalties cleaned up, and you'll be in good shape. But it's great to see the whole community out, and you got these kids. They out here and they see this, they see this W, and they're like, I want to be a part of this. And they got a young team that's going to be together this year and for years to come. There is no bad penalty for getting to the big dance a year early before you're supposed to. And this is the type of team that could get there a year early before they're supposed to. Double A, any other final scores from the CBC? How many teams do we have? Moving on to the regional semifinals here in the CBC. Uh, quickly, just to wrap things up here before we get off the air, Chardon up over Geneva 28-7. to That's in the fourth quarter. Uh, Cuyahoga Heights, they're up 10-6 against Valley Christian. That's a close one. Holy Name up 20-10 to over Lutheran West in the fourth quarter. Uh, Kirtland, that's the final, 48-6 to over United. And Perry winning this one. So Perry moving on. Kirtland moving on uh, from the CVC Cowhawka Heights right now, leading um, in their game. So it looks like those three teams are going to be moving on, depending on, you know, and Lutheran West is still in their football game against Holy Name. Yeah, so right now two, possibly three, four, at least, uh, at least a couple teams moving on to the regional semifinals. So at least – Sounds like, and especially going to neutral sites, CBC TV will have another game next week presented by the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery as the Pirate Marching Band plays and wakes up Double A up here in the booth. I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs>
I should have looked at the screen. I was not ready. But well, we, they're ready. <laughs> they are ready, and CBC TV will be ready. While we don't know where we're going next week just yet for football, we do know for the other style of football, the European version of football that is known as soccer here in America, we will be at Hawkin Upper School on Sunday. I'll be on the call along with our CBC TV crew for both the boys and girls all-star games want to wish good luck to Beachwood boys soccer program who is in their regional final tomorrow night against Youngstown Cardinal Mooney so CBC action all over the place make sure you tune in starting at noon on Sunday from Hawken for the boys program and then following that around two o'clock it will be the girls but until then this will wrap it up for this edition of the CBC TV Game of the Week Playoff These fans Edition. fans are not going to go home. They are not going to go <laughs> home. They're going to enjoy this one. Hey, it's the final home game. We know we're moving on to neutral sites in the football playoffs, so they're going to enjoy all of this one. As I just need to get out of here with trying to talk over this band who's playing amazing down below us. Your final from Perry. Perry 35, Fairless Falcons, nothing. Want to thank the CBC TV crew on cameras, Jason Young, Amara Jester, our production directors, Peter Tellup, and Jim Wagner. And, of course, as always, my buddy, my broadcast partner, Double A Anthony Alford. I'm Kevin Arnold, making sure you guys all have a great rest of your weekend. Perry 35, Fairless nothing. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.